Good morning, friends. My name is Jennifer, and this morning I am going to do a bandage wrap cheese. I have never done this before, but I don't think it's gonna be that hard, and cheese making is always about learning, and it's always fun to see how people do it. So, I'm gonna show you how I do it for the first time. <laughs> I know nothing. I'm just always figuring this out as I go along. This is a Darby cheddar that I made over the weekend. I cultured it with clabber. I already have posted on this channel how to make a Darby cheddar so you can make your own Darby cheddar. It's a fabulous cheddar. It's very easy to make. It's very fun to make and straightforward and I just kind of knock it out. I just ordered cheesecloth from Amazon, a whole thing of it, and I cut off some pieces and I washed them and hung them up on the line to dry. And now I'm going to cut these into the right size. The goal with this cheesecloth is that it's gonna be able to cover the cheese four times. So I need four pieces. It's gonna go over the cheese and be glued on that way. And I'm gonna take another square and do it from the other way, top down, and then do it all again. So I need four of these pieces, at least. I'm really, really, really bad at crafts, just so you know. I avoid crafts like the plague. Did it just tear? Yeah. Ha! Yep, that's plenty. The other thing that you need, besides the little cheesecloth, and this is going to get totally moldy, I'm only using this for this particular cheese. I got lard, and just from the store, grab some lard, and I'm going to heat it up, make it soft. You want it to be melty. We do have our own pigs. We'll be butchering them in the fall. Then I will have homemade lard and I cannot wait. But until then, store-bought it is. I don't know how much it's gonna take. I'm just gonna, I guess, do like that and see. I could use butter for this. Butter is just more expensive and it feels more delicious and lard doesn't feel as delicious. And so why would I want to waste my butter? If I can waste lard instead. I don't want to like cook this or make it really hot. I just want it to be meltable so that I can get it saturated in the cloth and wring it out. Okay, let the residual heat cook that. The mold that grows on the outside, it's easier to penetrate into these cheddar cheeses because the curds don't knit as well. So the mold kind of gets down in and you have to carve it out and you end up wasting a bunch. I found that it's easier to get natural rinds and age them naturally with the molds when it's a smooth cheese, like a Gouda or Raclette, Parms, whatever is like really well, well knitted together. But cheeses like Darby and cheddars are a little bit harder to knit. So. That's the reason I am putting on this cheesecloth because once I get this in lard and wrapped around here, what's gonna happen is the mold is gonna grow on the outside of the cloth or on the cloth and on the fat. It will penetrate through somewhat to the cheese, but most of it will be on the outside. And then I can just take that off and I won't be cutting off as much of the actual cheese because it's on the cloth. I might burn myself, yep, I'm gonna burn myself. Hoy, that's hot. <laughs> Let me do this, put it on the plate. Let it lay out a little bit. It's cool. I'm going to do another one. Oh, we hot. Watch me get grease burns. Oh, y'all. I don't always think things through. So I'm going to wring it out to get all the lard, extra lard out of it. I'll just lay it on the cheese. This is so cool. I think it's supposed to have more lard in it. So I can make it stick to the cheese. Like seal it down. And I'll lock it in. It smells like bacon. Bacon and cheese. How lovely is that? Yes. So I'm using this kind of as a blotter now. Loading up the fat. And I think I want, yeah, all that white to be gone. That's the cloth that's not quite saturated. And I'm pressing it down. This feels right. So then you bring it around. I'm going to seal it and make it as level as I can up here. I'm assuming that anytime there's creases like this, mold is gonna grow in them. And so you just really wanna like flatten them out. If there's creases, it means there might be air trapped in there. And air means mold. We're just gonna leave it like that for now. This one next, I'm gonna wring it out. And now we're going to go work in the reverse. Gunk this little bit of cloth in here. Get it going. It's cooling down. It's not feeling quite as hot. This feels really fun. This also makes me feel like Egyptian mummies, burials. Oh, I'm running out of lard. Look at that, some of it's all gone. Let me take a little bit more lard. I'm rubbing it on, like, 
because it's already a little bit warm. I'm going to put a little bit into the kettle. Maybe that'll soften it because it's still warm in there. I have seen people where they take butter that's just room temperature butter. They don't soak the cloth. They just smear it on top. So I could just be doing a layer of cloth, smearing it on with butter, doing another layer, but I'm making it wet because it just, it actually feels like it works better this way. And flip. like playing with finger paints. This really soaks up the lard. <sighs> Need more lard. <sighs> I can see why this part is easy. If you just do this too, it sticks better really fast. Just kind of smooth it on. So right now I could stop. I have four layers on, I think. But I'm gonna do one more. Just for good measure, it's looking good. It's looking like it's all smeared down, so pretty like. <laughs> I love fat. I love working with fats. It's just so gratifying. Something about it. Something primal, probably. Okay, so what I'm doing now is it's all on. It's not completely smooth, but that's okay. And I have a little bit more fat in here. I'm just gonna go around the cheese packing on this last layer of fat and making sure it's really, really well coated. <laughs> so fun. I can kind of feel it's like a little bit dry right there. And so I just want to come over and make sure it has a good, a good covering because the fat is keeping it so that the oxygen can't get through. And so you want to make sure it's totally covered. The lard is warm and a little bit, but the cheese is so cold because it was in a really cold room that I'm not worried about that, like hurting the cheese at all. It just kind of chills down right away. That's a lot of fat on that cheese. I think I used about a half pound. And there we go. It's ready to be aged and I haven't actually thought through this next step very well. I guess my options for aging are to put it in the aging box, like I keep my other cheeses, but those have been going crazy with mold. Like I think it's a little too high moisture. The other option is to put it in my wine fridge as a cheese fridge and just put it on a rack and let it sit there. I'm a little scared of introducing that much mold to my cheese fridge. I also don't want my all my cheeses in there to smell like bacon, but Maybe it's okay. Maybe if I just sat it like that. I can't open the door. So these are my two options, to put them in a cave like right here or to put them down in this wine fridge and let them sit on a shelf. He smells the lard, no Danny. Yeah. Oh, it's like a cake is like iced itself. Hang on. No, I need that rack. Can you please set that rack down because these bars are too far in between. I didn't want, I wanted that little rack underneath because I don't want, there, now I got it. Okay, so there's my cheese and that's at 52 degrees right now. A Darby cheddar needs about, I think it's three to six months to age, maybe longer. I'm just gonna keep an eye on this. I'll film it every now and then because all I'm doing is flipping it and I don't think there's much to do besides flip and keep an eye on it. But I am gonna label it real quick with a piece of, what kind of paper, just regular paper? Maybe that will work, let's try it. Let's go see if that will stick to the bacon fat, whatever it's called, lard. There we go. 